Many faculty still talk about using AI detectors to solve the problem of AI-generated plagiarism, but I'm here to tell you that AI detectors are bunk and should not be used. Hi, I'm Prof C. I talk about technology and its impact on society and geopolitics, and today I want to talk about why AI detectors cannot be trusted, should not be used, and what faculty can try to do instead. While AI-generated images can be tagged or watermarked, either explicitly or in ways that hide the tag, text generated by AI can't be easily tagged as being AI-generated. And if it is tagged, those tags can be easily removed. So, several companies have developed tools that purport to be able to recognize patterns in some of the text that will indicate that it is an AI that generated the text. And for a short period, it seemed reasonable. Even OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, released their own AI detector in early 2023. But now we know better. These systems produce many false positives and false negatives. Unlike traditional plagiarism tools, AI detection tools offer a rough probability estimate and no direct sourcing of where and how plagiarism occurred. There are numerous cases of students being falsely accused of cheating and faculty not understanding how to use these tools. And very much like AI, AI detection tools can be a bit of a black box. None are open sourced, so we can't really understand precisely how they work, even if they have an FAQ that describes how they work. I will link to a tiny sample of the cases below from the popular press and a lot of research about how bad these systems are, including an FAQ from OpenAI, the makers of ChatGPT, that say explicitly that AI content detectors haven't, quote, proven to reliably distinguish between AI-generated and human-generated content. I don't want to throw too much shade on my fellow professors on YouTube who have made videos about using AI detection tools. Still, hopefully by now, they realize that AI is changing so rapidly that a system that might have worked very well at one time is probably not going to work in the future. Also, remember the current AI generation tools that you are using, like ChatGPT, MidJourney, those tools are the worst they're ever going to be. They're only going to get better going forward. Also, there are lots and lots of systems that will generate undetectable AI text. And there are lots of ways that you can modify your prompts to fool AI detectors. Just look around YouTube and you're going to find lots of tips and ideas. Now, I don't know if all of these methods work, but if just a few of them work, that is enough to cause concern. This AI detection arms race pits institutional goals, having massive classes and easily gradable assignments against student goals clearing those mundane assignments and hurdles so they can move on to more significant challenges. And it needs to stop now. Let me tell you how I think it should end. But to do that, we'll have to take a little diversion into the field of epistemology, the science of human knowledge. A priori knowledge and post priori knowledge are two different ways of knowing distinguished by their dependence on experience. A priori knowledge is knowledge that is independent of any experience. For faculty, when we assign an essay to a student about a topic, we usually know what we expect prior to the student's experience writing that essay. We know what will be required to get an A, a B, a C, or an F grade. The student's experience of researching and writing is not really required for us to know what we expect from the assignment. These are the types of assignments that Generative AI, ChatGPT, can write in a few seconds. Oh, and I hate to tell you this, but lots of students are already just paying to have their essays written when they are given these types of assignments. A posteriori knowledge, however, is knowledge that depends on experience. It is knowledge that can only be obtained through observation or experimentation. For faculty, if we give an assignment to a student and we don't know what to expect, we have no prior knowledge of what will come back from that student, then that is the type of assignment that an AI will have a hard time writing. Let me give you an example. If I was to ask a student to write an essay about the accomplishments of the man from Missouri, Harry S. Truman, 
Well, an AI could probably predict what those results would be uh, for an essay about the accomplishments of this particular president, and the faculty could as well, before the student has even written it. However, if I was to ask a student to write an essay about how their town or how their family had been changed from World War I, a war in which Harry S. Truman was a soldier, well, I don't know how Clark, Missouri was changed by World War I. And probably the student doesn't either, and probably an AI doesn't either. And so that's the type of assignment that we can give to students where we don't know what the right answer will be until we see it or until the student has done that research and had that experience. And those are the types of assignments that are much harder for an AI to come up with and probably much more interesting for students as well. Now, could a student use an AI to help them with this assignment? Certainly, but it could not write it verbatim without creating fiction or hallucinations. These are the types of assignments we should be thinking about and teaching students how to use AI in order to complete them. Now, let me say one other thing to faculty and to any of my students who are watching, this is not easy. I am trying to do this with my classes, but it is hard to pivot all of your assignments and much harder to grade these types of assignments. But I think that's the work that we really need to be doing. So regardless of your approach, there are many others that I failed to mention that are ways to give assignments to students that can't be easily done by ChatGPT. We have to put an end to this ridiculous AI detection arms race because these AI detectors are bunk. Once again, thanks for watching, and for God's sakes, if you've gotten to the end of this video, please subscribe. <laughs>